Well, folks, it's time to address the elephant in the room. The thing that I honestly never truly thought would ever happen. The return of Bobby Petrino into Fayetteville this weekend. We'll talk about that as well as talk about if the Arkansas Razorbacks have passed the test so far throughout their first two games and why the 6 p.m. game against AM is so important. This is the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I am also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 TheBuzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Tuesday as a... Uh, Maybe just the season goes on. I mean, this is just so much fun to where each and every day I wake up, I'm excited to do the podcast. I'm excited to talk about whatever is going on in, in Razorback land because there's so many things to talk about. Uh, but today, I honestly thought about doing this particular podcast later in the week because of, you know, none of the timing of everything. But since there's been some things that have been brought up via social media and some discussions that's been had, I felt like this is the best time to talk about the return of Bobby Petrino. Now, this is something that's not surprising. We all knew that this was going to happen. We all knew that this day would come once this game was scheduled and once we figured out that Arkansas was indeed uh, going to be playing Missouri State while Bobby Petrino was the head coach of Missouri State. It, it just all seemed very strange, almost surreal. That's like, is that really going to happen? Are they really going to play Missouri State? Is Bobby Petrino really going to be there as the head coach when it happens? Well, here we are. And it has officially happened. And yesterday during the coaches' press conference between both Sam Pittman and Bobby Petrino, uh, they had some things to say not only about uh, each other, but about the program and everything. First, we'll start with uh, Coach Sam Pittman. Here's what he had to say about uh, the return of Bobby Petrino. And he's a great coach. I mean, he was when he was here and went to the Falcons and Louisville. And, I mean, um, that was they tried several different people, you know, before him, and he's he's been able to go in there and and get them back to the playoffs and get them to the playoffs and and uh, you know he's just a really good coach. You got a good staff and you know went into transfer portal and and got a lot of players there and I'm sure that they, they went there because of his reputation as a coach and and. Uh, so it's been really a, a great job that he's done there, and I'm sure we'll continue to do. Credit the Big Trail Nation for that video. So Sam Pittman understands what Bobby Petrino is, and I thought that was really cool to, for him to say, like, hey, you know, this is when he was here, he was very successful. Uh, he's a very good coach at Missouri State, and, you know, some of the, the best times and the best years Arkansas had was under Bobby Petrino. And then Bobby Petrino was asked about how it would feel him going back into Fayetteville and he had kind of a classic Bobby Petrino response. I think we'll see when, when I get there. Right now what I'm going to do is just focus on the week and the preparation and what our players need to do. I'm sure there will be some feelings and emotions when I step in the stadium, but it's really not about me. It's about our football team. And, you know, we've got guys on our team that have worked extremely hard, um, people that have been here since I first came, guys that we've added to it. Uh, but since June, you know, we've been the same team uh, dedicated and working hard together. So it's really about our, our players. And shout out to K-O-L-R for that, uh, for that video there of Bobby Petrino and his press conference too. So you get both coaches kind of talking about it. And, I, and Petrino's response was very, you know, Petrino-esque of, you know, yeah, we'll see when we get there. You know, I'm just focused on my team right now. And, uh, you know, there may be some emotion, something like that once we enter in the stadium. Like very dry very Petrino like and that's about what I expected out of them but the thing is is we hear the coaches the coaches are going to say the right things Sam Pittman's going to say the right things Bobby Petrino's going to say the right things uh fans are having their own reaction too um I've seen on social media that you know some people are talking about wearing neck braces which is you know whatever uh you know just for fun and, and everything so uh it's just a very intriguing moment you don't see this happen very often in sports but here's the thing. I had somebody post the question to me yesterday on social media about Bobby Petrino coming back and if I'm going to boo him when he comes on the field. 
because uh, I'm going to be at the game. I, I've been, I'm, tr- I'm going to most games this year. I sit in the stands. I don't sit in the press box because uh, I'm a fan, uh, just to be honest. And I like sitting in the stands a lot more because it's a lot more fun. Um, but when he comes into the stadium, you know, I, I don't know like if I'm going to sit there and, and have any sort of thing, but I'm not going to boo him. If anything, I'm going to cheer him. I'm going to cheer for Bobby Petrino. I'm going to applaud Bobby Petrino returning to Arkansas. And if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Like, I'm not saying you're wrong for booing him or anything like that. But I'm not going to. And the reason being is because I hate the way that it ended with Bobby Petrino. I hate the way it all went down. I hate the fact that he did what he did. And I hate the fact that he was fired for that. Like, I hate it all. And I remember that moment and that time I was first getting into radio and how just mixed emotions I was where I'm like, I didn't even think it was real, him getting fired the way he did. But what made it so much more surreal is Bobby Petrino, to me, was the, is the greatest football coach at Arkansas in my lifetime. Now, Pittman has potential to get there. He's not there yet, and, but, I mean, he's on the right track 100%. And very quickly, he could become my favorite and the best coach of Arkansas in my lifetime. But the dude was far and away the best as of right now. He was able to do things at Arkansas that so many people didn't think that were possible. He was able to put together an offense that was electric, uh, exciting, tough, uh, when the game was on the line at the end, Arkansas seemed to always prevail. Uh, he had some really, really talented players, which I always laugh about. Everyone talked about his recruiting. Are you kidding me? Like he had like four four star wide receivers at one point, all on the same team. He had uh, four star tight ends. He had uh, four and five star quarterbacks. Like he had four star running backs. Like uh, you have what? What recruiting? What was the issue? Like I never saw that. But anyways, <clears throat> there were people that always felt like you know. Things were teetering off, and I did this podcast on that way back when. If you guys want to watch it and go back to it about what if Bobby Petrino was never fired. But the point is this. is like I'm saying all that to say this. Bobby Petrino went 21-5 and five in two seasons. He had back-to-back winning seasons, back to, or back-to-back 10-win seasons. Uh, in one case, had 11 wins and finished number five in the country in his final season at Arkansas. That's something I love. That's something I remember and I cherish because it was so much fun. And it was because of Bobby Petrino. The dude was a phenomenal coach. He gave respect to Arkansas on a, on the football scale. He, he gave them the respect that they deserved. And as far as people believing that they could compete. And honestly, if you think back to during those years of when he was in the SEC, that was when the SEC was really at its peak. Because if you look at the coaches that were coaching during that time in the West, you had Nick Saban, you had Les Miles, you had who when Les Miles was at his peak, <clears throat> you had Bobby Petrino. You had Dan Mullen over at uh, Mississippi State. You had Gene Chizik slash Gus Malzahn, but you had the Cam Newton era there at Auburn. Like, you were loaded in in the SEC. And then on the East, you had Steve Spurrier at South Carolina, which Bobby Petrino had to play every single year. You had Urban Meyer. You had Mark Richt. Uh, You had uh, James Franklin at Vandy when he was – I mean, Vandy was as good as they've ever been. So you just had so many great coaches there during that era, and he was able to win at the highest level. And the thing is, is people talk about him embarrassing Arkansas with his actions. Okay, so yeah, maybe he did. Maybe he did. But the thing is, is like, he apologized for it. And he wanted to make it right. And he loved his time here at Arkansas. And I'm usually, I'm, I'm a forgiving person. Like, especially for Petrino, who... Gave me so much joy as a Razorback fan during those times and and during those eras. So the thing is this. I'm going to cheer for Bobby Petrino. I'm going to applaud Bobby Petrino. Because of what he did while he was here at Arkansas. Took us to new heights. Took the Razorbacks to a point to where they hadn't seen in decades. Where not only did they have back-to-back 10-win seasons. But they were constantly in the mix for top five rankings. They were constantly beating teams that they were supposed to beat and having big plays down the stretch when they needed them the most. Like they were just a team and a program 
built the way that you would want to see an Arkansas program and taking it to that next level. He was responsible for that. And really, if you think about it just in this century, since the year 2000, Arkansas has really only had three extremely enjoyable seasons, maybe four, but three for sure. Two of those seasons were because of Petrino in 2010 and 2011. The other one was in 06, which was really enjoyable, but the drama surrounding that whole thing kind of put a damper on it all. But he's responsible for two of the greatest seasons that Arkansas has had in 30, 40 years. And I love him for that. And I appreciate him for that. He didn't leave Arkansas to go to get a better job. He didn't trash Arkansas and say how bad it was. And, he, you know, he could have, after he got fired, he could have just, you know, gone scorched earth and, and hated this place and, and everything. But if you remember him speaking at the Little Rock Touchdown Club just a few years ago and seeing the remorse that he had and him getting choked up when he's apologizing and talking about how great Arkansas and how meaningful it was to him, like those are the things that really just show me, okay, this guy, he's not perfect. He did screw up at times, but that gummit, <laughs> I root for him. I root for him. And so I'm excited to see him come back. I'm always going to be a Bobby Petrino fan. I'm always going to be appreciative of what he did at Arkansas. That doesn't mean I like what it what he did off the field. I'm like, I'm not trying to say that. But I I just it's something that where I it means a lot to me. That that year, those years when I was in college, um, watching those, watching those uh, teams and those games is just so much fun. And also, real quick before we get out of here, I always will take pride in the fact that I made Bobby Petrino laugh one time. I did. It was uh, I'll never forget. It was at the like the recruiting signing day thing in 2012, right before he got fired, and they were doing like a Q&A from the audience where you could ask Bobby. And Bobby, Bobby had just missed out on Doro Green Beckham. And so I was like, oh, man, so he's probably pretty like pissed off. But I remember I asked him a question. I was like, I was like, coach, you know, I, I've been in college uh, for seven years now. Uh, I think, I no, I think that that pine had been si uh, six years. I don't know. It's hard to keep up. It was, it's been a few years. It's like, coach, I've been in college for a long time. And he cut me off and he was like, Wow, your parents are a lot better than my parents. They would have uh, they would have put a stop to that at the very beginning. But, you know, it took me – it didn't take me that long, but it sure took me a long time to to graduate college. And, like, he kind of, like, had, a, like, a laugh with it. I was like, oh, my gosh. But, anyways, it's always going to mean so much to me to see Bobby Petrino back. And uh wish him nothing but the best of luck except for this weekend. So, that's why I'm going to cheer for Bobby. If you don't want to, that's fine. You don't have to. I'm not saying you should. But uh, it's something that's uh, always going to mean a lot to see uh, Petrino. And the years that he had at Arkansas, I will cherish forever. From cringing at the pump to getting eye-popping checks at your favorite restaurant, inflation is hitting us all where it hurts the most. And it really hurts. That's why I started using Upside. Upside is an incredible app for anyone that buys gas, groceries, or dines out. With every purchase, I'm earning cash back thanks to Upside. And, and here's the thing, folks. We're always trying to find ways to save money and to earn money. This isn't some sort of, oh, well, where's the silver, where's the underlying, you know, uh, you know, small writing that you can't see. Like, this is a real thing. You earn money. You earn cash back for your everyday purchases. So to get started, download the free Upside app and use promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. Next, claim an offer for whatever you're buying using Upside. Check in at the business, pay as usual with a credit or debit card, and you get paid. In comparison to credit card rewards, and loyalty programs, you can earn three times more with cash back with the Upside app. And Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every single week. That's probably why they have a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. So download the free Upside app and use promo code LOCKED to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. That's $5 more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more using promo code LOCKED. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so continuing on with the Locked On Razorbacks podcast and looking at the first two games of the season, I saw that um, you know people have given the reactions to everything going on in the SEC, and it kind of gives a way of like who's passing the test, who's looking really good, and that's kind of the things I want to talk about with the Razorbacks. Have the Hogs passed? their test and it's 
an ongoing test. So I'm not trying to say, well, through two games, they've, they, they're perfect. That's it. They've, they've done a good job. It's over. Uh, no, but it's a matter of, you know, is Arkansas looking like I thought they would? Are they the team that I thought that they would look like in the start of the season? And the answer to that question is absolutely, they are. Now, not everything has been what I thought it would be. Obviously, Catalan going out is a big factor. Um, I thought the cornerbacks would be slightly better than what we're seeing. They're still not horrible. They're not as bad as what people try to make them out to be. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, they are. Uh, they they have some work. They have some things that they need to work on. But honestly, the defensive line is better than what I thought originally they would be. They've shown some, some elements to it. I think the... The offense is honestly great. Like, I was thinking about this the other day. I was talking with some friends of mine. I don't know if this offense is going to be, uh, once SEC play comes around, like, number-wise, better than what it was last year. Like, I don't know if KJ is going to throw more than what he did last year or throw for more yards or throw for more touchdowns or, or whatever. Like, that element, I really don't know what the end game is going to be. But I'm telling you, like, what's the weakness of this offense? I mean, really ask yourself that. Like, what's the weakness of this offense? It ain't quarterback. KJ's phenomenal. Certainly ain't running back. Rocket Sanders is that dude. You know, Dominion and A.J. Green have done some good things. And you get Dominic Johnson back at some time this year, who was awesome last season. So you get him. Offensive line is incredible. Really grading out high. The wide receivers are honestly better than what I thought they would be, too. Not to say that, I mean, I had high hopes for them. But, you know, Landers, Keytron Jackson, Hazelwood, those are some really good players. Tied in, much better than I thought it would be. Trey Knox is doing a great job. So what's the weakness? What's the weakness? Well, I'd say they don't have one right now on offense. At least not nothing that they've showed. They've done such a good job of, of putting it all together and looking fluid. And Kendall Bryles has done a really good job of putting pieces together. I think that Cody Kennedy has done awesome with the offensive line. I just think that they've done some, so many good things to try to put this all together and to make the, the team flow much better to where you're going to see, like, you know, people wanted, well, I want to see more passing. I want to see downfield. I, you know, I want to see more of that, which I get. Like, I, I want to see that more too. But to me, I have always felt like if an offense is able to do something with success, then you don't really need to do anything else. You know what I'm saying? Like, keep them honest, obviously. But it's like a game against South Carolina. I just I didn't need to throw the ball. <laughs> like, I'm sure that people wanted to see, you know, of course, Matt Landers dropping that pass was brutal. Brutal. Can't have that, especially in big games. Like, if that would have happened against Bama, I probably would have just jumped off the stadium ledge. <laughs> but um, you can't have those plays. You got to make up for it. But it's like Arkansas didn't need those plays because they were just running it at will on South Carolina. You know, against Cincinnati, I think that – because of what the defense gave Arkansas, the way that they ran their offensive game was predicated on the rush and predicated on the run, predicated on KJ making decisions. So that's what they did, and that's why it worked. Now, there's going to be games, though, this year where you're going to have to rely on the pass. There's going to be games where you're going to have to throw the ball. That's just the, the way it is. And so uh, I, I fully expect them to find that at some point in time this year. It may come against a and it may come against Alabama, not totally sure. But either way, I, I think that Arkansas is equipped to do it. Like if they get into a game to where the team is shutting down their rushing attack, they're going to open up the passing game and they're going to find ways to, to make it work. So I fully expect it to be just getting better and better. And who knows, maybe against AM, uh, because that'll be the next big test. I'm not trying to overlook Missouri State, but the next big test will be AM. Maybe that's when things really decide to open up a little bit. a and is kind of a weird team. Like, I don't know if they're more dangerous because they lost, or I guess we'll see what they do against Miami this weekend. But if they lose to Miami, too, at home, I'm not saying the wheels will start falling off for A&M, but people may start jumping ship. They're like, eh, eh, it's not what I signed up for. I signed up for greatness here at a and But still, that'll be a test to where we see if Arkansas open, opens up the passing game. But they're capable of it. Like, it's not like, oh, crap, they're stopping the run. We're screwed. Like. They can be able to make some adjustments and be able to do the passing game really well. So, uh, But I think offensively, they're for sure passing the test. I think that they're uh, as good or even better than what I thought they would be offensively. 
I think defensively, I, I don't want to say they're better, but they're not worse than what I thought they would be. They're not because the D-line's better. Drew Sanders is amazing. Bumper pool's doing his thing. Uh, the secondary has had its issues, but injuries have not really helped that either. Uh, so, And special teams has been about what I expected. So nobody's failing. Nobody's worse, but they got to really continue to get better. That's for sure. Raise your back fans. Are you game day ready? Hopefully you are, especially for this weekend and all the Razorback football games coming up this season. When you want to show your Arkansas pride, Alumni Hall is your ultimate shopping experience. The best and largest of apparel for the whole family with Nike, Nike Golf, Champion, Columbia, an amazing college vault of vintage and throwback logos, plus, plus gifts, accessories, and all of your tailgating necessities. Razorback students, faculty, and militaries receive 10% off in-store and you can earn cash back with their Hall Pass rewards. Alumni Hall, shop for the store on Fayetteville and College on College Avenue or anytime at alumnihall.com. And it, it's just got a great selection, folks. I, I know I wear this shirt a lot because I love it, but I got this great Hawaiian shirt. I have multiple shirts that I've gotten from Alumni Hall, gotten hats. Like they have it all. It's incredible when you walk in there. Not only do they have so much selection, but they always have it in stock. And even if they don't have it there, they can make it work for you where they can find, go, either go to the back. They can order for you. They're always willing to help you out as well. They even got big and tall. So that's a big deal. And also an NIL custom shop. Now, this is online only. But if you have a favorite football player, you can visit the NIL custom shop where you can pick a shirt or sweatshirt, pick a player in their number, and make the design and wear the custom apparel that you want to wear. And you can do that by alumnihallcustomshop.com slash collection slash Arkansas or dash Razorbacks. So check it out. I mean, they, they have it all. They can help you out with anything. And if they don't have something that you want or something that the, they can help you out with, then just ask them and they'll they'll take care of it for you for sure. So make sure you're game ready. Visit the store in Fayetteville on College Avenue or online at alumnihall.com. Alumni Hall, where Razorback fans go to shop. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Okay, so final segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. whoop de doo we finally have a game time for the uh, Southwest Classic, which is so funny that we still call it that. I guess because it's in Arlington, we got to still call it that, even though it's not what originally what it was. But either way, uh, this year's uh, edition is going to kick off at 6 p.m. So this game next sun Saturday will be at 6 p.m. from AT&T Stadium, home of the Dallas Cowboys. And, of course, Arkansas ended up uh, winning last year's game. And here's what's the funniest thing. So I'm looking at this. <laughs> I'm looking at this statement, or at least this uh, press release. And I still die laughing. Where a and from when Petrino left up until last year, won every single game. From 2012 to 2020, 2020 right? Yeah, 2020, A&M won every single game. Okay? You're talking about essentially – Nine games, 10 games. Arkansas still leads the all-time series 42 to 33. <laughs> so you had that long of a stretch where you won every single game, like nearly a decade, and you're still like 10 games short of even catching up to them. So Arkansas's own Texas A&M in their history. And so uh, we'll see how this game ends up playing out next week. I'm liking Arkansas's chances in it, but it's just nice that it's going to be on at 6 p.m. on ESPN because uh, I feel like it's not been a night game in a long time. I know that we had that 8 p.m. game, which sucked. I, I did not like that. It's better than an 11 a.m. game, I guess. But when it's halftime or when the third quarter's starting and it's about 11 p.m. or close to 11 p.m., that's not fun. That's not an enjoyable experience. So I'm glad that it's at 6 p.m., but that was the last time I think it was a night game. It's either been 11 a.m. or 2.30, because last year was 2.30. Uh, the year before that was in College Station. So. Um, that one didn't matter. Uh, I think that was a night game, too. 2019 and 2018, I think we're both at 11 a.m. 2017, was that like probably 11 a.m., too? I just don't feel like there's been many night games in this series down in, in Arlington, so it's good to see that this one will be on there. And uh, if our, hopefully Arkansas is able to take care of business. Texas A&M dropped significantly in the rankings. They'll pop back up if they end up beating Miami this weekend. Uh, but Arkansas is going to enter in, assuming that they take care of business against Missouri State this weekend. They're going to enter into that game as a top 10 team. And it's been a while since they've entered into that game as a top 10 team. In fact, fun fact, uh, even during the Petrino era, they were never a top 10 team going into that game. So this will be a first for Arkansas. 
But I'm excited about it. I'm going to be down there. Can't wait to, to see it all go down. And hopefully Arkansas is able to take care of business because if they are able to start the season 4-0, Bama coming to town. No, nope, not even going to get to it. Not even going to get excited about it. We're going to approach that when it happens. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. But still, it's good to have that game at night. It's good to have that game uh, nationally televised on ESPN and should be a, a great matchup too. So uh should be an enjoyable time. I know for many Razorback fans heading down there to Arlington. Well, appreciate everybody listening into the Locked on Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.